Hi, so this problem is from ISI Entrance 2020. It's a very beautiful problem. It starts with this equation x plus 2 whole square times x plus 7 whole square plus a equal to 0. Here x and a are real numbers. That's given. Our goal, and I'll put this in red, our goal is this find a find such an a such that this equation this particular equation has exactly one double root exactly one double root So what is a double root? If you know what is a double root, then of course you can go ahead with the next part of the problem. If you don't, here is a quick sketch of what I mean by a double root. Uh, it's very easy to understand in the case of quadratics. So I will use that example. But this is not a quadratic. This is a biquadratic in the sense the highest power of x is 4. So there will be 4 roots possibly all distinct, maybe some of them are equal to another and so on. So a double root in the case of quadratics, if you draw the picture of it, it looks like this. It, the parabola, and if you draw a quadratic on the, on the x and y plane, it becomes a parabola. The parabola touches the x-axis at exactly one point. Of course, there, there are precise definitions, algebraic definitions of double root. But this is the one that we will be using, this particular intuition. So, let me say this one more time. If the graph touches the x-axis at a single point, at that particular point, a double root appears. This is the place where, in the case of quadratic, this happens. So we will get back to this equation and we will pick up this little portion of it, the product of two squares, this portion of it and create something called an auxiliary polynomial. Why is that? In a moment I'll tell you. So let's look at this function, the one that I am going to say is an auxiliary polynomial. This is x plus 2 whole square times x plus 7 whole square. Why do I study this function? Because this plus a, where a is a real number, you can think, is, think of it as a drawer. So it will pull down or push up the graph of this particular function. If you add a, the entire graph will go up by a unit it's a if a is positive if you add a negative a then the entire graph will come down by a units but the entire the graph will keep on looking the same okay so how does this particular function looks like all right let's draw the graph of it so graph this function notice that x equals to negative 2 and x equals to negative 7 makes the value of this function 0. So plus a is not a part of this function. The function is just x plus 2 whole square times x plus 7 whole square. So let's mark the roots. So this is x axis and this is y axis. And let's mark the roots at negative 2 and negative 7. Great. So this part of the function, this part of the problem is sometimes covered in our uh, ISI and CMI entrance program. Graphing the function is a very important tool to understand functions. So if you are a student of Chinta, you can just use that part to learn more about this. 
So what happens to the graph? Uh, see, it's a product of two squares. So the quantity fx, the value of fx is never negative. Square quantities are positive because x is a real number that's given. Square quantities are positive. Product of two positives is positive. So value of fx is always positive. We know this. Great. So what happens if x goes to positive infinity? Well, the value, value of fx goes to positive infinity as well because x, x goes up, both of these quantities will go up in the sense go up in value and their product will also be very a very large positive number. You can think of it like this. So as x goes to positive infinity, the function goes to positive infinity, right? As x goes to negative infinity, the function also goes to positive infinity. Why is that? Because obviously, if x is a very large negative number, each of these little quantities are very large negative numbers, but squaring them will make them positive and product of two positives will also become positive. So, as x goes to negative infinity, this is fx, sorry. Uh, as x goes to negative infinity, fx goes to positive infinity. Great. So what happens between negative 7 and negative 2? <coughs> Notice that this is coming down as x is going from left to right. The function's graph is coming down because it has to touch the x-axis at x equal to negative 7. What happens beyond negative 7? It cannot continue down. Why not? Because fx then becomes negative. But this is a product of two squares. So it's neg never negative. So it must turn at x equals to negative 7. Turn up. And then there must be, a some, must be some place between negative 7 and negative 2 where it turns down again. Why? Because at negative 2, it has to touch the x-axis again. Only way it can do is if it comes down. Okay. And then it must go up again. So this is how the function looks like fx equals to x plus 2 whole square times x plus 7 square. There are some more subtleties to this picture. I'm not going into that at the moment. This is like a broad picture, I mean very roughly drawn picture in, the, in some sense. For example, how do you know that there are not two bubbles like this? So how do you know that? That can also happen. How do you know that this is not like this? This that this part of the function. It's still going up to positive infinity, but why why cannot why it can't do, do it like this? Why it has to do like this? So there are I mean you have to think about it and there are some tools to analyze that part of the function, convexity and so on. It's a very beautiful part of mathematics. You should definitely study it. Uh, but for the moment, we'll just use this particular graph. Okay. So what do we have? We're trying to find A such that this portion comes down, such that this tip touches the x-axis at a single point. And we know that when, when that happens, a double root arises. Right. So we will find this height and bring the function down by that amount. So the function will then look like something like this. And there will be one root here, a single root. There will be another root here, another single root. And this is the Porsche point where there will be a double root. Okay, great. So how do we, what is the, what is this height? If we know this height, we can pull the function down by this height. So set A equals to negative that height. A equals to negative that height. This one, right? So we have to find, find out that height. Let's see how we can do that. So we look at the function fx equals to x plus 2 whole square times x plus 7 whole square. 
and the problem is to find the maxima of the function the local maxima because that's where the turning happens so we take a derivative of it if you know how to f find out maxima this part is really easy this 2 times x plus 2 x plus 7 square plus 2 times x plus 7 x plus 2 square so I can take 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 7 common x plus 7 plus x plus 2 okay so this is 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 7 times 2x plus 9 okay that's f prime x so to find the maxima we have to check where it becomes 0 so it becomes 0 at negative 2 negative 7 and negative 4.5 these are the three values where the maxima becomes 0 where the derivative becomes 0 so two of them are roots of the function which corresponds to these two points so we wanted to find the point in the middle so x equals to negative 4.5 is our candidate right so let's go come back to here this point must be x equals to negative 4.5 so if you plug in negative 4.5 into the function you will get this height so this function if you plug in x equals to negative 4.5 you will get the value of fx which is the height so a should be negative that height so the function should come bar down by that amount it's quite beautiful isn't it how you apply calculus into this uh, sort of polynomial looking problem why don't you finish up the rest of it i have given you the entire solution you just have to plug in x equals to negative 4.5 in this equation and find the final answer the final answer is also in the link in the description put a comment with your final answer and tell us how if you have another alternative method of doing this problem and I'll see you in the next video keep on doing great mathematics